my day with love when I start my day with love that's what I get more of is love I start my day with love when I start my day with love that's what I get more of is love Welcome to Spring, and welcome to Unity of Salem Sunday Service. My name is Reverend Patty Williams, and it is truly my joy to greet you this morning.
Let's now join together in prayer. Mm, sweet, sweet spirit. Universal presence. We come together and open our hearts. We open our minds to truly knowing the one presence, the one power. We open to the living expression of truth and we give thanks for this day, for this opportunity, for this moment and so much more. We are truly blessed. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Hello, my name is Ed and I'm your platform assistant today. And I do have a few announcements to share with you. Looking for fellowship? Immediately after Sunday service, our board members are hosting a gathering on Zoom. If you are watching on Zoom, please stay right here after the service. If you're on Facebook, we will post a link in the chat. Or you can also find the link on our website. Unity of Salem is hiring a part-time bookkeeper. If you are interested in applying, please contact the office. We have quite a schedule of activities during Holy Week. Have you signed up for our virtual retreat with Karen Drucker? Friday evening and Saturday morning, April 2nd and 3rd. This will be an uplifting, life-affirming experience. There's more information on our website. On Wednesday, March 31st, we are hosting a virtual Passover Seder experience with Rabbi Israela Tubman. You can register on our website. We will have two services this Easter. Weather permitting, we will have an outdoor sunrise service at 8 a.m. on the grounds at the church. And at 10.30, we will have our normal 10.30 a.m. online service featuring our choir. In addition, we will be setting up our living cross. However, this year it will be outside under the awning behind the sanctuary. You are invited to stop by any time, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, to add your cut flowers to the cross. Please join us now in singing Living Water. Where do we get that living water? Where do we get that living water? Where do we get the living water? Where do we get the living water? Where do we get the living water? Together at the Where do we get that living water? Where do we get the living water? 
We now join together in affirming the Unity of Salem mission statement. Unity of Salem nurtures spiritual growth in inclusive, loving community. And our vision statement, centered in spirit, we create a world of unlimited peace, love, and joy. And our core values, inclusiveness, spirit-led, compassion, love, joy, and integrity. I now invite Clay up to read our word for the day. The word for today is clear vision. And our affirmation is, I see clearly through the eyes of God. Just as a hot air balloon can lift me into a higher perspective, so too can I raise my mind and heart into an elevated place of being. Simply by imagining myself being carried aloft into a brighter, more light-filled altitude, I gain a new vision of my life. Whenever I feel outer events pressing down on me emotionally, I take a mental assessment. As I close my eyes and tune in with the indwelling presence, I begin to feel a shift in my awareness. My heart expands and my whole being energizes with the light of God. Seeming problems drop away as I take in a new energy and vibration that dissolves any old, unwanted points of view. I focus my will, lifting my perspective into a higher perspective, and I look at life with new eyes. And from 1 Peter 3.12, For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. Thank you. Thank you. 
So today is the fifth Sunday of Lent, and during this time of uh, preparation for Easter, we have been focused on the seven final words that the Gospels report Jesus having spoken from the cross. As a heads up, at the end of the service today, you are probably going to want a journal or a piece of paper or some kind of a writing instrument near you. So in this journey through these seven statements, we've been following um, a booklet, a Lenten booklet that Unity puts out. And in this booklet, they use the work of Reverend Mark Anthony Lord on the seven living words. So he's taken these statements and, and turned them into words that we can live and use as spiritual tools to, to breathe them alive in our lives today. And these seven living words started off on our Lenten journey with the word forgiveness. Based on Luke 23, 34, when Jesus called down from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And then we looked at now, based on a statement from Luke 23, 45, where it is recorded that Jesus was speaking to the two thieves on crosses on either side of him when he said, today you will be with me in paradise. Paradise being um, a higher state of consciousness right now in this moment. Which brought us to the third living word, oneness. In John 19, 26, Jesus is speaking to his mother and his beloved disciple John when he says, woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. What would it be like if we experienced each person we meet, each person on this planet as our brother, our mother, our father, our sister, as our loved ones, as our self, truly experienced that energy of oneness. And then last week we discussed truth. Based on Matthew 27, 46 and Mark 15, 34. Jesus' statement was, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? He was acknowledging his thoughts, his feelings in that moment. And when we do, just as Jesus did, and, and we name it, we own those thoughts and feelings and bring them into the, the light of God, they can be transformed. That's when true transformation can express, when we can be lifted to that energy of paradise. And today our living word is vision. Based on the good news of John 19, 28, on Jesus' simple statement, I thirst. We could assume that he simply means that he's dehydrated. Um, and according to scripture, there was a man that responded to this statement with, with vinegar, um, reaching up and, and quenching Jesus' thirst with vinegar. Now, I had to look that up because it kind of felt a little like he was, um, what is the word? Like, well, like he wasn't doing something good. But when I looked it up, I in fact learned that vinegar is extremely quenching when you have a deep thirst. Which to me was an example why we must be very accurate in how we understand scripture because I could have totally misinterpreted this individual's actions. And as you know, 
I appreciate understanding the, the context within which the words were spoken because it allows me then to look at the passage metaphysically, to look at the symbolism and, and what does this passage mean to me today? And I agree with Mark Anthony Lord when he says he believes that Jesus is talking about something much larger than the physical body. He speaks as a man of great vision, one who truly knows that deep within our souls, that deep within each and every one of us is a, a desire to truly know God, to truly know that which is eternal, that which is the essence of who we are. The allness of God. A very expansive concept. And as Mark Anthony Lord calls this, the living water. A biblical term that is actually found quite frequently in the Old and New Testament. Water was a very scarce complex. In, complex, that's a very interesting word. A very scarce resource in the Middle East. And when it showed up at any time in your life, it was considered a miracle. It was truly a gift from God. I went to a website called Truth Unity, which has been um, archiving a lot of Unity's historical documents. And I did a search on the Samaritan woman because I know that the story of the Samaritan woman at the well is one in which the living water is mentioned. Most of us know that she was an outcast from society. And yet, we're very aware in this story that Jesus knew that. Jesus knew who she was. Jesus knew um, her, the, the society's concept of who she was. And yet, it mattered not to him. His nature is one of natural forgiveness. He lives in the now. He beholds the same Christ in her that is in him. He truly sees with that energy of oneness. He talks truth to her about the living water, the water that will quench her spiritual thirst. In one of the transcripts I was reading online, and I apologize, it did not give the identity of the person whose words were being transcribed. It was a, a teaching that was generically offered through unity. And the question was, what is the well of living water in man? The answer, the well of living water is the font of inner inspiration within man's consciousness which, when the seal is broken, flows forth peacefully, majestically, vitalizing and renewing mind and body. In this clear light of truth, we are conscious that life is never changing, eternal. And then when asked more pointedly, what is living water? The answer came more simply. It is the inspiration of the Christ springing up in the mind to satisfy our thirst for truth and our longing for knowledge of God. It is that spiritual thirst that Mark Anthony calls when he is describing, he says, Jesus is describing the life force of God that is within all of us. When we thirst for this kind of living water and we permit ourselves to be quenched by the wellspring of spirit, we are forever made new, enriched, and informed. We are truly talking about that which is eternal, that which is the truth, and, and having the, the vision of bringing everything unlike it into the light of day, into that light of God where, where it can be transformed, where life can be lived to its fullest. You know, instead of experiencing physical dehydration on the cross, or maybe in addition to it, 
Jesus was looking at those around him and, and possibly looking even into his own heart and acknowledging a form of spiritual dehydration. I think this is some of us actually that many of us are experiencing as we live this long-term unexpected experience of this pandemic. In spiritual dehydration, we can begin to forget things that truly matter. We can begin to fixate on perceived problems or, or perceived negativity in our life. And instead of an expansive vision, we begin to experience tunnel vision, where life becomes smaller and smaller. If anyone knows about this concept of spiritual dehydration, I would say it is Mark Anthony Lord and any of us who have walked the experience of a 12-step journey. Some thoughts or some notes about Mark Anthony. By the age of 24, he was a full-blown addict who, as a gay boy in Detroit, grew up with a homophobic God who he deeply feared. Through working the 12-step program and surrounding himself with, with people who taught him self-awareness, who taught him self-compassion, who taught him, showed him the way to, to love himself and partake of the living water, he found success. He found success as a dancer, a performer, a choreographer. He was the minister and founder of the, the Bodhi Spiritual Center in Chicago. He has written several books. He now serves as a minister or a spiritual teacher. He's a, a life coach, and he's at the Unity Church in Naples, Florida. He found access to his own source, and he demonstrated himself those living waters and experiencing them and expressing them in our life of truly accessing the God of his being. And now he lives his vision, his vision of showing others how to access the same living waters, of how to truly transform our lives and become higher expressions of God. So with this journey of forgiveness, now, oneness, truth, we have cleared that way to live our vision. So we're going to take a few moments now um, and travel back a little bit in our lives. We're going to use that power of our imagination and, and access that, that energy of the child within us who had dreams. So this is the time that you might want those journals or paper or, or writing instruments with you. Because I'm going to ask you a few questions. And then without editing and you know, with spontaneity, I invite you to write down what comes to mind. And if nothing comes to mind, that's OK. It'll show up. It'll show up as words, as feelings, whenever the time is right. It may not happen now. But if we are open to it, there is a high possibility that you can gain some new insight through this experience. So here is the first question. That question, the first statement. Finish this. When I was little, I dreamed of being a... And now for the second one. What was so fun to me about this idea was, no editing, just write it down. I loved to play whatever comes to mind. When it came to make believe, I always was or wanted to be Finish the sentence. In school, the subject or 
extracurricular activity I was best at or enjoyed the most was And the last sentence, if the kids on my block were to put on a show, I would have been most likely to have been cast as, let it flow. And then look at these words. Look at how amazing you are. You had a dream, you had a vision. These answers all represent some quality of God that was desiring to express through and as you. Again, don't worry if nothing came to mind. It's there. You will know it. You may already know it. Now I invite you as you look back over those answers to use those answers and answer one more. Fill it one more. Fill in the blank. Looking at that role you were cast as, saying, the role of is important to the amazing success of the backyard show because, let me give you that one more time. The role of is amazing to the success of the backyard show because, You know, hopefully this fun little exercise helped you to dissolve something that might have been in the way of the energy of God expressing through you. Something that is alive in the well of living waters that is your well. That is the truth of who you are here to be. You know, qualities that could show up are, are joy, spontaneity, Teamwork. There is so many, there is no way I could list them all. And, and I have one more sentence. I am not going to ask you to answer this one right now. I want you to be with this sentence. So write down this whole sentence and, and let it ruminate in your life. I am here to bring this world more, whatever those qualities are, the exercise we have done may already bring them to mind. I, I would suggest at least three qualities, one or two if that's what you come up with, but, but be open to three. Because it is can we, when we can live these qualities that they can become our vision, that they can become our purpose, that we can quench our spiritual thirst. You know, I want to acknowledge that this is an exercise from Mark Anthony Lord and that he did develop it from the work of Michael Beckwith. Michael is focused on helping us all to access our vision and use this visionary work to transform our lives. Vision is not about what you are doing. It is about who you are being how you are being, what channel you are being, what vibration you are vibrating at in this life. What are you emanating out into the world? You know, Friday, I was um, listening to the director of research at the HeartMath Institute. His name is Roland McCready. And he was talking about the science, the current science um, about synchronization, about how we synchronized to each other's heart rate variability. And we do that through the energy of love, the energy of appreciation. But he, he, he talked about something that was even more amazing to me, and, and that's the newest science, that we also synchronize to the earth to the vibration of the earth, of this planet, to this planetary consciousness. We are one, and the science is proving it. Creating that vision and holding it is about vibrating at a higher expression. And, and as you vibrate higher, you are bringing all else into an expression of that higher vibration. 
Sometimes the way we get that is through experiencing earth. How many times do we say, when I go to the beach, or when I'm up on a mountain, or when I'm hugging a tree, I can feel God, I can experience God. Well, what if we vibrated at that energy all of the time, or at least as much as possible? We synchronize our life to that higher energy. Well, let's take some time and and do that right now in a time of meditation. I invite Angela to join us in grounding this energy, this desire to synchronize. I invite you, if you're comfortable, to close your eyes. To close your eyes and focus your awareness on the breath. To take a deep breath. And as you let go of that breath, to let go of any tension, just release it. Take another breath. And if you feel distracted in any way, to breathe into that distraction and let it go. Allow the chair that you are sitting in right now to fully support you as you relax every muscle, every tissue, every aspect of your being. Relax into this now moment. And as you breathe deep into this well, these living waters, I invite you to use the power of your imagination. to envision a tree. It could be your favorite tree. It could be a tree in your yard. It could be whatever tree, real or imagined, pops up for you right now. Just envision this tree. Explore this tree. Explore the bark, give it a hug, smell the life-giving energy with every sense of your being. Become aware of the roots buried deep into the ground, of the connection with Mother Earth. Feel it, know it, allow it to lift you and vibrate at a higher possibility, a higher awareness. An awareness of oneness. And in this place of oneness, I invite you to allow these words to be the words of your heart. Through my connection with the earth, I experience inner peace. I am calm and centered. I am grounded filled with the same diverse beauty of the earth. Love flows from my heart center as the wisdom of spirit directs my actions. I release all questions or concern and rest in the silence of deep faith knowing that all prayers are answered. That in the stillness, I am open and receptive to divine guidance. And I now listen in the silence.
and as we bring our awareness back to our physical bodies, we truly bring that vibration, that energy of oneness, that expansive vision, the eternal truth into expression right here and right now. And with grateful hearts, we give thanks, knowing that as we send out this vibrational energy, we truly uplift every being on this planet. And we are transformed for this and so much more. We are grateful. Thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. I look upon you with the eyes of my heart. This is the opportunity in our service where we bless the gifts that come in to support the work of this ministry. The financial gifts that show up through PayPal, that show up in the mail, that are dropped off at the office. The gifts of service, you know, the hands of God that show up and do the work, that clear off the trees on our property, that put up awnings, that answer phones. There are so many individuals, so many gifts, so many blessings. Let's truly join together and acknowledge these gifts with our offertory blessing. Divine love, flowing in, through, and as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. 
Thank you, God. This is also the time where we participate actively in that energy of prayer. I invite you to to notice the prayer box that is right here in front of me. In that box are the names of those that we have been asked to hold in the higher watch, to hold in that energy of a higher vibration. And I invite you right now to use the power of your imagination once again and add to this box the names of those that you might be holding in your heart, who might seem to be experiencing something less than their highest good. And as we join together in prayer, as we join together in lifting each other to this higher vibration, we know the truth that there is one presence and one power. And we call on that presence. Knowing God in our lives and in the lives for each of those for whom we pray. They are not alone. They are each divinely guided in their every thought, word, and action. They are supported in making the right choices to bless their life. Choices of upliftment that are life-affirming. We know that they are on their own journey. And we see them whole and well in every way as we pray this in the name and through the nature of the one living presence. Amen. And we now close our service affirming the prayer for protection, knowing that we are each safe and secure in arms of love. Together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And we are truly blessed, always. Namaste.